the criteria for patenting. What exactly can you patent? Title 35 of the United States Code, otherwise known as the Patent Act, says that a machine, manufacture, process, or composition of matter can be patented if it demonstrates the following three characteristics, novelty, non-obviousness, and utility. Patentable inventions fall into one of two categories, products or processes. Products are physical things, say, a machine, like a new type of robotic welder, or a manufactured item, like a new type of heart valve, or a composition of matter, like a new chemical superglue for binding materials together. Processes, or methods, on the other hand, are defined as a means to an end, either a means of doing something new, like being able to pay for purchases directly from your smartphone, or a new way of doing something old, like using pinch, swipe, and zoom gestures on a touchscreen, rather than clicking drop-down menus to manipulate text and images on a smartphone. Now let's take a look at what misses the mark on becoming patentable. All patented inventions fit into one of four categories, machine, manufacture, process, or composition of matter. But not everything that fits in one of these four categories can be patented. And the most important reason why one thing is patentable and another is not lies in the difference between ideas and applications. For example, you cannot patent an idea for a better mousetrap unless it can be developed into a new, non-obvious, and useful machine, manufacture, process, or composition of matter that can actually accomplish the task. Furthermore, you may have a genius idea for faster-than-light travel, but that will not get you a patent unless you can outline how to develop a tangible process or device for actually doing so, in which case you can seek to patent it. Lastly, natural phenomena and abstract ideas are also disqualified from patent protection. These limits preclude, for example, Einstein's E equals MC squared formula and the Higgs particle from patent protection. Because these discoveries exist independently of human intervention or knowledge, making this knowledge freely available benefits everyone. To restate the distinction, you cannot patent electromagnetism, but you can patent a telegraph that uses electromagnetism to communicate rapidly over great distances, as Samuel Morse did in 1840. Now that you've learned what can be patented and what cannot, let's take a look at the criteria for determining if a patent-eligible invention actually merits one. These criteria center around the three Patent Act concepts of novelty, utility, and non-obviousness. Let's start with novelty. The requirement for novelty in an invention, according to the Patent Act, means that to qualify for a patent, a machine, manufacturer, process, or composition of matter must not have been previously described or known. Specifically, it must not have been patented, described in a patent application, explained in a printed publication such as an article or technical paper, or publicly known or offered for sale prior to the filing date of the new patent application. However, if any of these are found to be true of an invention, it is said to have been anticipated and cannot be patented. These novelty requirements exist whether the prior art, the catch-all term for any previous patent, publication, or use, is domestic or foreign. This does not mean that a faster-than-light warp drive is unpatentable simply because it was described in a general way 50 years ago in the TV show Star Trek. That's because the TV show did not describe a warp drive in sufficient detail to enable someone skilled in the science of space propulsion to build it. The second criteria for a patent is utility, which means that an invention must function as intended. For example, the patent office used to deny hair regrowing products because they didn't work. In other words, they lacked utility. Eventually, a composition that did regrow hair was invented, proving its function and a patent was granted. Lastly, while an invention may be new and have utility, in order to meet the criteria for a patent, it must also be non-obvious. For example, imagine you invent a wheeled cart to move office supplies more easily between departments. If this is the first such wheeled office cart in history, you can get a patent for it. But if you then decide, hey, why not put those wheels on a chair, you won't get a patent for it. That's because combining two such widely known and available elements would be obvious to anyone skilled in the art of office furniture design. But things are not so obvious when it comes to inventing a camera phone. 
even though it's composed of well-known and widely available components, combining the two did satisfy the non-obviousness requirement because it became more than the sum of its parts and met a large and previously unfilled need in the marketplace. The millions of people who take selfies every day is certainly proof of that. Taken together, the three patenting criteria, novelty, utility, and not obviousness, function like the obstacles in an Olympic hurdles race. The utility hurdle is easiest to overcome, the novelty hurdle less so. But by far, the highest hurdle facing inventors is non-obviousness. In fact, the vast majority of rejections at the patent office are for non-obvious reasons. These three criteria help to ensure that patents are issued to inventions that truly merit them. After all, when property rights, either real or intellectual, are seen as overbroad, undeserving, or illegitimate, individuals and businesses are more willing to trespass on them. <laughs>